Hi, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial from TDCAT Tech. Today I'm in DaVinci Resolve 17 and I'm looking at three methods to uh, mix and duck your music to work with your vocal in your edit. And the three methods I'm looking at today are one, a crossfade, two, keyframes in the timeline, and three, automation. So if you know all of those already and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, yeah I've got that, then you're done. You know, you can uh, stop the video now. The music I'm using here today is from Artlist. This is not a sponsored video, but if you are interested in having decent music for your commercial projects or for YouTube videos, etc., please do use the affiliate links in the description and on screen now. And uh, you, if you sign up for an annual subscription, you'll get an extra two months free and uh, I get a commission as a result of it. So if you'd like to support the channel, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Right, so let's get started. I have my clips in here, and this is a super simple example. I have my video clip here with my vocal on. I have my title that I want to then increase the music level for when I bring the music in in a second. And then it goes back to my video clip again. So just show you those, there's me, and there's my title, and there's me again. But the first thing I'm gonna do, and this isn't really related to this, I'm gonna just add a pitch effect to each of these, and I'm gonna increase my voice by five semitones. Why am I doing that? Well, simply because I want, it to, I want to distinguish the vocal on the video clip from my voice that's speaking to you now because they are otherwise exactly the same. So it just adds a little humorous level, a uh, humorous element as well, doesn't it? Let's have a listen. It's in video from TV Cat Tech. Today I'm looking at... <laughs> that sounds funny to me anyway. I'm going to add my music now as well. So this is a song called uh, Teenage Dream and this is how it would sound initially. Welcome to another good thing video. Clearly way too loud, right? I mean, yeah. So the first thing with any music at all, a lot of the time, if you're gonna be using music of this type, it's gonna be peaking at around about zero dB because they're processed and mastered in such a way that they'll be peaking and they want to sound loud. So I would always bring music down to start with, just in here, you just bring it down, click on the, um, the you know, when you get the two little arrows there, just click there and drag it down to say minus five dB or minus six dB. There's no need to have music any louder than that really because the vocal's gonna probably sit around that level and the two are gonna just work better together there. So that would always be my starting point with any music. It doesn't have to be super loud, it's just annoying if it's really, really loud. Okay, so the first method, we want to bring the music down because I start speaking here, don't I? So all I'm gonna do is I'm <clears throat> gonna do a cut so I'm going to select the music and then I'm going to do a control backslash to uh, to just cut the clip there the other way I can do that is by clicking on the blade icon here and then or pressing B on the keyboard and then just move to the relevant section and uh, click on it there to uh, to do a little splice in the audio just uh, go back to the select tool with uh, with a and then when I get back to the part where I want it to go back up again which is here for the title. I'm gonna do another little split here in the audio. So select the audio clip and do a cut there. And then I'm gonna add in my default transition. You can do that with Control T, but I'll do it manually for you here. So go to audio transitions on the left and then do a, a crossfade. So I'm just gonna drag a crossfade onto here and drag a crossfade onto here. And at the moment, of course, that does nothing because this clip is the same level as this clip. But if I go into here and get these two arrows again, you can do this all in the inspector as well because we've got our volume level up here at the top right-hand side. He says whizzing around the screen. Simpler to just keep everything, you know, keep your mouse in one place, have get these two little arrows and drag this down. And if you're going to be talking for a long period of time, I would suggest levels on music of kind of minus 35 to minus 39 dB. Otherwise, it's just irritating for people to listen to. But if it's just an introduction section like this, then maybe you get away with kind of minus 20, something like that. So uh, I'm going to go with minus 19 dB and uh, just see how that sounds. Hi, welcome to another Good Zing video from TV Cat Tech. Today, I'm looking at all of these. Cool. So that's nice and simple. And the benefit of doing it this way is that you can uh, shift these around and the you know you can move the crossfade with it. You know, you can shift this about like this and you don't lose the levels. It will always drop down to whatever level is this clip is because it's just a crossfade from one clip to the other. It's a nice, easy way of doing it. It's a fast way of doing it, but it's not an incredibly flexible way of doing it. And I'll show you why right now. 
Okay, so for the second method, we're gonna use keyframes on the timeline instead. So while I'm here, I want this to drop down kind of by the time I've sp started speaking here. And I can do that by getting these two little arrows on the uh, audio level here in the clip, in the audio clip, and I can hold down Alt on a Windows keyboard or I suppose Option on a Mac, I guess, and uh, clicking, and that adds a keyframe. And then I can go to my next spot and add another keyframe. And by the time I get to here, I want this be, to be down at say that 20 dB again, something like that. So then we get our nice fade out after, after the title. All these comprise the iVlog. And the reason I like doing it this way, it is a pain to shift these around after the event, but what I tend to like to do is I, is I bring the level down enough initially for that kind of like speech to come across clearly, but then I continue to bring the level down. So I might add in another keyframe here, and by this point, I've brought it down to the level that I'm gonna be using throughout the whole kind of uh, video. So much more a much more kind of respectable level of minus 33 db because a drop from say 10 db minus 10 db or minus 5 db down to minus 33 db is is pretty kind of aggressive so this has a kind of two-step approach and it allows you to do that really nicely because you can just... all these comprise the ivlog di kit and, it, and the level just start continues to drop from off movo and the sole purpose really of this kit is to give you options. If you're looking to film on- And there we go, we've reached our level that we'll just continue the music on in the background. An iPhone or a smartphone in general, this is the kit for you. And this is, I mean, that's my kind of preferred way of doing it, but I'm kind of torn between the two, to be honest. I do like this, but I just find that this gives me a little bit more control, though it is fiddly. So there's the second method. But for the third method, I'm going to bin all this music off completely and put it in again. So here we go. Stick that in again. And now I'm going to go to my Fairlight page. And you see that I've got the music here. And now what we're going to use is automation. Before I, before I do this, really, automation is more for a bigger mix. It's designed for a much more complex project, but you can do it this way, so here we go. First thing we've got to do is enable automation. So we go to the top here, to the center, and click on automation, and then I'm gonna enable fader automation here. Then I'm gonna to go to this uh, music track here, and I'm going to enable it there, in the uh, in the track and i'm going to show the automation as well i'm going to put fader level on here so i can actually uh, see it when it's been written and as soon as i've done that you'll see that in the bottom right hand side if you've got your fader showing here if you don't you need to uh, click on mixer there at the top right hand side but you'll notice this one has gone a uh, nice kind of red color because we're ready to record on this particular track but it's now armed for recording so all i have to do is play here i'm not don't have to record we're not recording anything as far as fairlight's concerned we're just recording automation and it will pick up the automation just by playing so i can just hit the space bar and then get ready to use the fader hi Drop welcome to another goods in video from tv cat tech today i'm looking at all of these and you can see it all being written. If I zoom in here, you can see it kind of being written as I'm going along here. Ready to drop. All these comprise the iVlog DI kit from Movo and the Soul. And I can take it out completely there. And when I press stop, there's my automation that I've now written for this fader. And if I scan across this here. Welcome to the OTK. It bounces up and down. And now I can, I'm not going to go into the uh, how you edit and things like that because that's a, sort of something for another video. But that is one other method you can use to adjust your audio level. If you go back to the edit page now, all those are set in there and they will be, you know, they will be followed as you scroll through your timeline in the edit section exactly as it does in the Fairlight section. So there we go, three methods on how to mix and duck your music to work with your vocal in DaVinci Resolve 17. Hope you found that useful. If you've got any comments or questions, do put them down below, and I will catch you again soon. Bye-bye.